Hello, hello, test, test, test. I gave you a hollow ballers and a bro fist. I did all the things where everything probably looks a little bit different, ladies and gentlemen. We are unfortunately back in my house. We're back in my house. A happy new year to every single last one of you guys. A happy new year. I hope you had a great little festive celebration. We're all back and going things. But while I was in Switzerland covering the race to world first... Our studio was destroyed, unfortunately. For those of you who don't know, our entire studio was destroyed. Big sadness. Water came pouring in for three solid days over the weekend and wrecked the whole goddamn place. We're going to be out of there for a few months while uh, they get in and they do all that kind of stuff. Fix it up, dry it out. We need to repaint, redecorate, new carpets, the whole business. The place is absolutely wrecked. Uh, there's a couple of videos we got coming for you because uh, we're still missing a ton of stuff. We had so many cool people. Big shout outs to Chris, big shout outs to my brother, and big shout outs to Jono and other members who scrambled because I wasn't in the country uh, to evacuate the building and get all our equipment out and try and dry out as much as possible and do what they can with it, which means a lot of our stuff is like distributed over many different houses and different locations. We've got a storage unit where a lot of our stuff is. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So, for the next little while, we'll, we'll be streaming and creating content in the old school kind of way, which is fine with me. Uh, we did it for a long time. It's not like it's a big issue. It just kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. We got a really cool thing going on. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it kind of got messed up. But in a couple of months, it should be back. And certainly whining about it is not going to fix it. So, this is why we are here. In other news, Drama Time lovers, especially those of you who watch it on YouTube... In a couple of episodes time, so in about two weeks, Drama Time is going to be leaving our main channel as we refocus onto pure gaming stuff on my main channel. Drama Time will be moving to its own distinct YouTube channel, uh, specifically for Drama Time only. It will be going over there and out of the way because uh, it keeps, basically it's because of the algorithm game. Drama Time ruins our algorithm game. Uh, it has done for a very, very long time. I like it being there, but it doesn't matter. It will be moving in a couple of episodes uh, over to Drama Time. But if you listen to it on Apple or Google or Spotify, Spotify, wherever you listen to it, that will still remain exactly the same. And of course, all episodes will be available on our website. Uh, so you can watch it there. But yes, if it will be moving, it will be moving off our main channel over to there. Uh, so that's another thing that I need to announce. In other announcements, though, we started MMO January. It was supposed to be MMO December because I was not supposed to be going to the Race to the World first, but that obviously changed and we have now actually begun MMO January. We are diving deep into Dragonflight. We've done super well there. Now we're moving into Guild Wars 2 for the very first time. I've had two days in Guild Wars 2 to explore and the whole purpose is simple. How have these games diverted from that WoW formula? How have they found their, or carved their own path to success and changed things? And it's been really interesting, all the different nuances and things like that, that they've been doing. Uh, so we've been investigating Guild Wars 2. We've got Destiny 2 on the table. Maybe going to look at Elder Scrolls Online as well. And our goal is to clear the current raids so we experience their current gearing systems, the talent systems, all that kind of stuff. Clear the current raid, see how it goes, and see if we like it or not. So far, so good, though. Guild Wars 2 is proving to be very cool. But while you're here, let's have some drama time. Let's have some fun. Let's relax and chill. I'm sure my team will inform me if there's anything else that I've missed, but uh, that is going to be the case. So it's going to be... I have a, a story here. I have several, several stories that you guys have been sending over New Year. One of them here, Bex's put, is going to make you kick and scream. That sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. I think we want to kick and scream. I think we want to... I think that's how we want to start our new year. <laughs> with some kicking and screaming. So, uh... How many meltdowns... Can one guild have? Let's go with that. How many meltdowns can one guild have? So as we know in our history of drama time, there are unfortunately some people who will never leave 
any guilt. I'm guessing where it's going, as of course, all our drama stories I have not read and I have not seen until they are in front of me now. They are catered to by our lovely Lady Bex. Uh, but this feels like a guild that had all the red flags in the world. Maybe we can keep a red flag uh, <laughs> a red flag counter here as to when this person should have le should have left an abandoned ship uh, and how desperately these guys actually held on to uh, to the dream of having their own guild. Uh, so I'm gonna need a guild name from you guys. This guild is this guild is clearly doomed, so a red flag style guild name might be appropriate. Uh, in order to make our dreams come true, we're gonna need it. Okay, we're going with uh, we're going with boatless. <sighs> you want boatless? Okay, fine, fine. We'll have boatless. We'll have boatless. <clears throat> just as a pre-warning, I'm just letting you guys know. I have lost internet on my PC. The stream is clearly still up because I can see the chat right there up on my TV. Welcome home. <laughs> Welcome home. I actually have no internet right now. It's just died. I did have the chat in front of me, but I don't right now. But thankfully, I can still see you up there. And thankfully, I already downloaded the stories before we start. But right now, you guys, I'm looking forward to the mod team because I can't see a goddamn thing. All right, then. <clears throat> Here we go. Our first story of the new year. It's a good place to be. Hello, Preacher in your chat. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I've been a fan for a while now, but I've always been a lurker. Mostly because I'm Team USA and I have to watch the VODs after work. I don't watch every stream because I don't have the time, but I do love a good MSQ watch. But today's story is not about our beloved Final Fantasy. Rather, it is, of course, World of Warcraft. And in particular, a now former guildie who systematically made the entire guild hate him. Kick him. Just kick him from the guild. If there's that... You, every guild can be one guide. Like, I'm not memeing here. This is preach talking to you right now. Every single guild can be one guide. It takes just one guy to kill a whole guild. Guild leaders out there, they're not going to change. They're not. Listen to me. All right, listen to your daddy. They're not going to change. If somebody is clearly a problem, they're always going to be a problem. Always. This man, however, has less self-awareness than a rock. And probably still believes that everyone in that guild still loves him. And misses him dearly, even to this day. I want to start by providing some context about the guild known as Boatless. And how I came to it. We're an alliance guild. Uh, on a server cluster of seven realms you've probably never heard of. The Boatless formed as a merger that took place in 8.1 of several smaller ahead of the curve guilds. I think people tend to think bad things when they hear about guild mergers, but honestly, our guild merger worked out pretty well. So you took several guilds to make one 20 man? I guess you were going mythic. So you took what, like five people from each guild? Okay. Alright. <clears throat> From ahead of the Kurd guilds prior to dipping in Mythic in Eternal Palace to getting Cutting Edge in Nihilotha, I would call our merge a success. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to pretend we're top tier players or anything. Anyone who was around for Nihilotha Cutting Edge will admit that they were carried by corruption bonuses. But we have gotten Cutting Edge every single tier since then. Generally speaking, we would label ourselves in trade chat as a casual Cutting Edge guild. The Boatless is a guild of friends. Getting together for two hours, three nights a week, and eventually getting cutting edge at the end while all having a very good time. Okay, seems fair, seems fair. Seems like long progress. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of months and months of progress, but it's fine. When I came into the guild, a couple of weeks into Castle Nathria, I came in because my friend, Blind Hopes, was already there. Blind Hopes and I have been friends for years before we played World of Warcraft together at all. He's a pretty good guy, but at the time he wasn't a raider. So his bringing me in the guild was in no way a guarantee of being on the mythic raid team. And I wasn't expecting it to be either, to be honest. Especially since I had never pulled a mythic boss in my entire life. But I trialed in the Saturday alt raid until Yerba, the guild master and raid leader, sent me a message in Discord and asked... Do you want to try raiding some mythic? Hmm. 
I'll admit, I rode the bench for most of Nathria. But due to some roster issues towards the end, I was brought in for Sludge Fist Mythic and Stone Legion Generals Mythic. Great. That's wonderful. That's that's about as good as it gets. That's really good. Good first experience. Good first experience. Unfortunately, I was not in for the kills. I just did all the progress. <laughs> but I showed good attitude, according to the raid leader. And so I was slotted in for the main team for Side and Athreus, and they let me stay in for the kill. I know this might seem irrelevant, but I think the context of who we are and how I fit into things is important to understand the tales I'm about to weave for you. Now, one of the pre-merge guilds had a group of people who had been together and been close friends since Legion, if not even further before that. That group includes Yerba, Non of Khan, and Caltrek. Two good but opinionated guys who are also big trolls and, in, in their own words, meme lords. Two of them were officers, though Caltrek wasn't until the near the end of this tale. And lastly, Zorath. Zorath seemed like a pretty cool guy at first. Relaxed, friendly. He'd talk to anyone about anything. He'd talk some shit. But it always just seemed like friendly banter. Nothing that was bullying or anything like that. And I want to make it clear before going further that for a long, long time, I really, really liked Zorath. I had some occasional bumping of heads with him because he was very outspoken, but friends do that. That's not that strange. Now, I want to make two things known about Zorath. First, Zorath is a Windwalker monk. I don't, I know Mike, oh, okay, I know you don't like how WoW has turned into uh, people you interact with not having a name, just being a class color. Does any of us like that? I don't, I really hate that. I genuinely do really hate that. Do any of us like being just referred to as our class? I'm, I want to, I don't like it. You do? Okay. Well, obviously, yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> However... Zorath, his entire, entire identity is not just a World of Warcraft player. And not even just a monk, but as a Windwalker. Hell of a hill to die on, but sure, okay. Second, Zorath fucking loves keys. He loves keys. Even before we started doing mythic raiding, he was obsessed with keys. He has been quoted as saying such things as, Sex is okay, but when you get two more Raider.io points, that's the real orgasm. <laughs> I, I think you're having bad sex. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> That feels just like you're having really bad sex, honestly. That sounds like a two-pump finish. That's what that sounds like. You might as well have jerked off. It would have lasted longer. <clears throat> Even based on that description, I think you can start to see some of the problems. But for a long time, it didn't affect me. I didn't take notice of it. It wasn't a big deal. Because he was good at hiding his issues from people at first. But he started to get comfortable. He was around a lot. We were talking a lot. And some things about him started to break through. The cracks started to show. The first big problem that I had with Zorath, tale number one, was patch 9.1. A bunch of us were hanging out in Discord doing Corthia dailies. <sighs> Sounds like a party. <laughs> I don't remember what the exact conversation was at the point, but whatever the topic was, a question was asked, which ultimately, after some discussion, boiled down to, when did Wrath of the Lich King release? Now, Zorath gave a year which was not correct. I corrected him. Zorath lost his fucking mind. I then googled it and took a picture and sent it to him. He began screaming. 
He then began to rant at Nonofcon about my entire personality. Screaming about how I need to always be right. And the entire guild is sick to death of my elitism. And he just can't take it anymore. I couldn't even speak while this was happening. I was legitimately dumbfounded. But even though it was the most crazy shit I'd ever heard, it got to me. While listening to this raving, I started to think, do people think that of me? None of Con, of course, just said, will you calm the fuck down? But he kept going until either he muted me or one of us left Discord. I was still surprised, though, by what he said. Despite having been there for over an entire season and having been there for Side and Athreus, etc., I still kind of felt like the new guy. I was unsure of how people really felt about me. Maybe the guild was talking shit about me behind my back. I couldn't help it. So I started whispering people about it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I sent some messages out to people I thought I could trust. Oh, no. Oh, no. This takes me, this takes me so back to being a guild master and just receiving these fucking weird whispers randomly. Like these absolute just fucking crazy ass whispers. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. You know, you're just trying to play a game, man. I just want to do my key, that's all. <clears throat> Ultimately, I talked to about seven people about it. I asked them if others felt that way about me. The general sentiment that I got back was, no. <laughs> Zorath is just a blow-up kind of guy. One guy even told me that Zorath had recently muted him permanently because he described our guild when he described our guild as semi-hardcore. Zorath didn't appreciate that label as he considered our cutting edge progress to be hardcore and was then annoyed that some people might not put in the right amount of effort to grind Corthia research if we labeled ourselves as semi-hardcore. Kick him like right now. Okay, like, no, 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 man. No, no, just kick him, right? This is it. That's over. It's GG's. It's GG's there. It's like, thank you and good night. Uh, and go enjoy. Just disappear. <clears throat> I'll tell you the truth, though, audience. To this day, I'm not entirely sure if it was actually just Zorath or if others did have similar feelings about me. It still lingers with me to this day. Dude, dude, you got one guide. Right? This is what we were talking about at the head of the story, right? You got one guide. You got abs Look, lis listen to me. Listen to me. I'm a YouTuber. Thousands and thousands of comments every single day, right? You've got to move past it. You've got to move past Occasionally something leaks in. Something gets through the armor, but you've got to fucking... You've got to put it away. Otherwise, you'll be sat there forever. You'll be sat there forever. Do you know what I mean? You just got to... You got to move it out. You got to move it out. We got nearly one guide today. Well, I didn't, but like, you've got to, you've got, don't get one guide. It's the worst. <laughs> I sat and had some self-reflection. I decided there was some level of truth in what he said. There might be. There might be. That's not bad. There might be. There's, there might be something there. There may be. And I made an effort to improve myself. That's not bad. That's all right. A little bit of self-reflection. Okay, that's some, obviously something somebody has noticed. All right, let's see if we can do something about that. That's okay. That's all right. After a couple of weeks, Zorath decided to unmute me. And he was like, before, everything was fine. For literally months, it was like nothing had ever happened. Not long after 9.2 was announced, there was another incident. In 9.1, Windwalkers were incredibly broken in AoE, to the point that most of the community was calling for them to be nerfed. Of course, those cries didn't account for the fact that their single target was dog shit. So one day, mid-November, Zorath linked a clip of Max talking about it. Due to the fact that I had, on many occasions in 9.0, 
Heard him take shots at our guild Boomkin about nerfing Moonkins. Who, Max had? Due to the fact that I had on many occasions in 9.0 heard him take shots at our guild Moonkin about nerfing Moonkins. Is this Tettles' guild? Probably Zorath. I don't know. I kind of want to believe it's Tettles' guild, right? It's got to be. It's <laughs> I kind of want to believe it's Tettles' guild. I need some confirmation. Or maybe it was Zorath. I don't know. I figured it was innocent, obvious banter to say, yeah, sure, please nerf Windwalker. Oh, no. <laughs> However, what came after I said, please nerf Windwalker is a joke. I was joking. I was joking. 50 minutes of him calling me a complete fucking idiot. I remember some of the insults verbatim, so I will recite them for you now, Mike. Okay, here we go. Yeah, mate, because you even have any clue how Windwalker works, you prick. <clears throat> I, I This is after, and then after I tell him I was trolling, dude, I really don't want any of my teammates to get nerfed. That is not even trolling. At least kind of figure out how the class works before you open your fucking stupid mouth. His next one that I remember clearly was, no, it's just hilarious. You don't even know how any other class works in this game and pretend that you do or have like an opinion on how they do and then call in for nerfs even though you don't know what they do, mate. Sometimes I think you just say stuff without even thinking about it like you've got no reason to. I want you to bear in mind. I had never... In the months I had known him, said a thing to him about Windwalkers prior to this very moment. I don't know why this happened. I don't know why anybody would have no sense of any self-awareness. I was at this time that I started to get whispers in the pink from none of Con and Caltrek, the officers. Caltrek just sent me memes he was making about the meltdown, but none of Con decides to tell me how every single patch since 8.0 Zorath has had at least one meltdown that's on his permanent record of the guild. Oh god, the guild keeps permanent records. Oh shit. <clears throat> I do not want to see my permanent record. <laughs> oh shit. Would any of you actually want to see your permanent record? Fuck man, I bet that is scuffed. <laughs> is there good stuff in it? Is there any good stuff in it? A permanent... F I, I don't think I want to be in a guild that's like actually got like a document... Of permanent shit, but you did it wrong. Messed up that key. Took two hours to do Temple of the Jade Serpent. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> he then said, in all his notes that they have on him, they have, oh my god, they got like a dossier. He blows up, is pissed off for a couple of days, and then comes right back like nothing happened. None of Con didn't tell me all the stories. But here are some of the past Zorath meltdowns that were on his permanent record. Oh my god. <gasps> Is this copy and pasted from his permanent record? Jesus Christ. Patch number 8 point... Oh, they label it by patch number. Oh, this is grim, dudes. This is, like, horrifying. This is horrifying. Oh my god. Patch 8.0. Zorath was uh, not only an officer of the pre-merge guild, but the raid leader. During heroic Mithrax progression. Oh my god, they remember it by boss. <laughs> this fucking sucks. Oh my god. During heroic Mithrax progression, we are told things were not going well. They researched it! Oh, get lost! They researched it? They reached out to confirm the story? They went full X-Files. Oh my god, they got corroborating witnesses. We were told things were not going well. He began to get increasingly upset that they may not kill Mithrax that night. Mithrax apparently contained a weapon he needed. <laughs> he began berating the tanks repeatedly until the main tank said and is quoted as saying, Holy shit, I cannot take listening to this fucking guy complain for one more fucking second. The main tank apparently all f 4 and quit tanking and raiding completely following this incident. Shortly thereafter, Zorath was demoted from officer and raid leader. 
To be fair, that should be on the permanent record. I think that's something worthy of the permanent record. That's okay. That should that should be on the file. That should definitely be on the file. I'm okay with it. <clears throat> Second entry. <laughs> Patch 8.0. Guildies doing ra oh, rated battlegrounds. Apparently the team was at a 2k rating and he would not stop complaining about how bad Deepwind Gorge was as well as generally bitching and complaining that no one would listen to his calls. Caltrek told him calmly, Zorath, relax please, because they were losing and he needed to call a strat. Zorath decided to ult F4 mid-game. That's how you win. Following the loss, the other nine people wanted to continue, so they replaced him with a pug. Nice. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Approximately... <laughs> God, this is taken like an actual court document. Approximately 30 minutes later, Zorath logs back into the game. Likely because he must have seen people still in Discord playing. In the guild chat, he types, You're still playing without me. I hope you fucking lose, in all caps, and proceeds to log out of the game a second time. He never apologizes for this outburst. And they never invited him back to the RBG team again. The next time they queued and didn't invite him, he is quoted as saying, Dudes, I have one bad night and now you all hate me. Question mark. I'm actually kind of on board with the permanent record system now. I kind of dig the permanent record system. I'm, ki I'm kind of down with it. I'm kind of down with it. This is kind of baller. I I'm, I'm digging it. <clears throat> Nihilotha patch. Oh, God. He was furious one night on Zanesh. One player never had to do soccer, while he, he always had to do soccer. This upset him because, and I quote, I never get to get a pass. I think if somebody brought up passing on Zanesh, I would take a shotgun to their house and kill them. I think I would do that. If anybody on Zanesh ever started to fucking go on about passes like i have a rank one on zanish but jesus fuck i wasn't trying for it god damn of course and it is noted here that other players obviously had to do soccer it's just that he was in team one and we didn't always make it to the, to the teams <laughs> he's bitching because he always has to do group one and other people and the group has wiped before team three has to do theirs. Oh wow. <clears throat> that's kind of uh that's kind of tricksy. So he want okay. Oh, that hurts. That hurts inside, man. That hurts deep inside. That's that's painful. <clears throat> Yerba told him, we just want the boss dead. If you're going to talk about passes and act like this, you can literally just leave the raid. Korath quit the raid without a moment's hesitation, only to ask to be invited back two bosses later, claiming like nothing ever happened. Inv? <laughs> Inv? Infraraden? In is it Raden? There's two bosses after Xanesh? It is, right? Infraraden? Need the trinket? <laughs> I should note. Uh, <clears throat> I should note at this point that I have observed this behavior since. I have I have seen repeated behavior since, on Zymox in Castle Nathria and Remnants in Sanctum. His complaints were about never getting to pass because he had to do the seed mechanic and orbs. You fucking piece of shit! Really, Zymox? We're trying to pass on Zymox. That's what we're doing. We're trying to pass on Zymox. That's what we're doing. Oh, sweet fucking Jesus. <sighs> During Soul Render, he told the entire raid to respect a single target because those ads are mine, end quote. <laughs> and they would enable him to pass and beat Trill. Following this, he complained <laughs> that our Moonkin was still using Starfall and multi-dotting on the ads. 
Love it. Ki kind of. Kind of I, you know what? There's a certain level of degeneracy I kind of have to respect. I kind of have to respect this level of degeneracy. This is nice. This is this is pretty good. This is this is some good shit. I like it. Now at this point, everybody listening to this is probably wondering as much as I was. If you have this all on his permanent record and it's a regular occurrence, why is he still here? I asked the question. Good. None of God told me that he wasn't always like this. In Legion, he was chill. We're two expansions later right in legion he was chill that's like four years ago dude that's four fucking years ago are you trolling four years ago he was a chill dude but over time more and more he'd gotten worse none of con thinks it's related to deteriorating health plot twist he has an illness that puts him in constant pain and none of con thinks that he's become addicted to his pain pills but none of that was a reason to keep him in the guild. <laughs> That's irrelevant. As for why he's still not been kicked, the answer was easy. It was down to Yerba. Jesus, where is this going? Zorath and Yerba are good friends. And I think we both thought Yerba had some trouble separating that for the good of the guild. So the decision was made to just deal with him. We checked back through the permanent record... And agreed that one meltdown per season was acceptable. We instead would make a plan of how to deal with his meltdowns as they usually would resolve themselves in a few days or a couple of weeks the next time a meltdown would occur caltrek would begin immediately making memes to let us laugh it away unfortunately zorath started to go above average the meltdowns began to get worse they became more frequent and i think we all realized that it started when Blizzard introduced a Mythic Plus title. There's a title for Mythic Plus? I had no idea. Mr. Mythic Plus, who loves his keys, was foaming at the mouth to get that title. Fair enough, we thought. It's his favorite thing to do in the game. He loves keys way more than raiding. We memed about some of the things he said, like the above quote about Raider.io points, Raider points and sex. But once he got it, it went to his head. It didn't stop like we hoped it would. The Tormented Hero, so I guess that's the title, became the Tormented Hero. He developed a superiority complex about it and people who didn't have the title. He had something that marked him as better than the rest of us and he would not let us forget. While there are many ways that he showed this, one of my favorites was when he would call the raid loggers, more casual players, bottom players. <laughs> I'm not going to even give you the details of meltdowns at this point, because as I said, they were getting increasingly frequent. But there are a couple of significance I think you should know about, especially the ones that affected me. There's a couple I'm going to explain to you all. But you need to know that early in 9.2, I had stopped raiding because my girlfriend's health had drastically deteriorated. Oh, I hope she's okay. I need to have time to help her out. I still played, if only to keep my sanity from what was going on in my IRL. And I told Yerba that I would try to be in reserve if I needed to fill in, but I couldn't be there as the main team. And that did happen on the second night of Skolex progression. Oh, God. Skolex progression? They were short someone. And so a whisper came my way from Yerba saying, can I play tonight? My girlfriend was working, so sure. And we ended up killing it in three pulls from there. About a week later, I'm hanging out in Discord when someone asks if I want to do a DOS key. Sure, I can do a key. I join the group. And who do I see in there but Mr. Mythic Plus himself? He says he's been listening to Jinji all day. 
and he wants to do calls like Jinji does. I don't know if you'll ever see this, Mike. I know you listen to Drama Time sometimes while you're grinding those keys, but you fucked this guy's whole life up. It's your fault, Mike. It's your fault. Just letting you know. You can't ELX your way out of this one. You fucked this guy's whole life up. If we didn't do the exact rotations and stuns coordinations, he began to rage at us about how noob we are and how we would never become tormented heroes like him. Oh my god. The key was only an 18 or so. And by the time we got to Hakkar, he started screaming at me to do the ads. Maybe I should have done the ads, but fuck that guy at this point. I was also mentally exhausted because I was dealing with the knowledge that the woman I loved was dying. Oh, bro. Is she still at work? What's happened? Hey, big love, bro. So I told him to shut the fuck up. We don't want to listen to him. We don't come to do a key to hear screaming. I don't care if it is the correct way to do it. And I certainly don't give a fuck if it's the Jinji strategy. <laughs> 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 his response to this was well you should listening to me a tormented hero you might just learn something I left discord without a word unknown to me at the time he said he doesn't deserve his passes oh Jesus Christ <laughs> his passes you know you didn't earn those passes you didn't earn those passes. Apparently, prior to this event, he had been complaining about how bad Windwalkers were compared uh, and compared his Skolex pass directly to mine. I'm a demo lock, which was pretty poggers in 9.2. Windwalker was so tr fucking dog shit that despite him being thousands of DPS below me, he blew past and I got a grey pass. Of course, I hadn't been raiding. I had just come back to fill a spot. All of this comes up a few days later. Some of us were in a low, low plague fall, carrying someone's alt they recently capped. Zorath, who wasn't even in the key, joins us and starts explaining how bad Windwalkers were and started talking up the Grey Pass. Blind Hopes, who had been in Discord during the DOS key and heard his previous comment and was pissed at him for coming after me like he did when I'm going through shit, told him to just shut the fuck up. No one cares about fucking passes. We killed the boss in three pulls. Who fucking cares? In the space of 20 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, 20 seconds, Zorath personally attacked Blind Hopes in at least five different ways. I don't have the exact quotes. I don't want to mistell it. But the general sentiment was, who the fuck are you to talk to me like that? You don't even have any fucking titles for Mythic Plus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you don't even have a fucking mythic plus title you fucking loser you fucking loser you don't even have a mythic plus title and you want to talk to me you want to talk to me who the fuck are you you fucking poor he kept going through he kept going through none of con telling him to cool it until none of con deleted the voice channel on the guild discord Later, discussing it with people like None of Con and Blind Hopes, the consensus, consensus was Blind Hopes could have been more tactful. But Zorath had escalated it to 12. Blind Hopes is getting some shit for this? For telling him to shut the fuck up? No way. At this point, so many of us were done. We're done. We're sick to death of it. We're tired of walking on eggshells to accommodate him. We tried not to say things to him directly, hoping he wouldn't talk to us. But as scummy as it may be, when he wasn't around, we were talking mad shit about him. <laughs> of course you were. Like, <laughs> there's no way you weren't. We had so many internal memes about his meltdowns. It was unreal at this point. We even started something called the meme li library. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we were completely innocent, but we had to vent it somewhere. We had to share our experience with other people who had seen it. Otherwise, like, we were all bottling it up. Even his best friend, who he's known since they were teenagers and knew in real life, would join in the memory. We could have kept going like that. Except for one day, when we were talking mad shit, 
and Blind Hopes was streaming. <sighs> you were talking mad shit while someone was streaming. Rookie maneuver, rookie mistake. I I have witnessed that firsthand. Not not I wasn't talking shit about anybody, but I know somebody was talking mad shit in whispers about someone in our raid team. This was during Cataclysm, while they were streaming and did not have their chat box hidden. And the guy they were talking about had that stream open. Let's just say the raid ended early that night. The raid ended early. <sighs> We were all convinced that Zorath was trying to see what we were talking, saying about him. Because we couldn't figure out why he would sit in the stream channel. But he was. And we proceeded to get so many messages around 4am. Shocked, he was. Shocked and taken aback. To hear about how what he considered to be his best friends in the whole world. Oh, this is kind of sad. Oh, you're making me feel sad for him now. Oh, come on, man. The people he thought were his best friends apparently all hated him. There's a bit of sadness, man. Yeah, there's some sadness there. The guy's got some health issues. He might be addicted to pills. Like, It's rough, dude. It's a rough scenario. I honestly tried. I did. I wanted to salvage something. I had heard that he'd just maybe gone in the wrong direction in real life. I don't know. And I'll be honest with you, when he wasn't being an arrogant asshole, he was really fun to be around. And I felt it important that I tried to make him realize what he was doing was a problem. So I talked about a lot of things I've told you about in this story today. Not the stories I heard secondhand, but the ones that I personally experienced. I made a particular point about how the first incident where I reflected and I tried to make myself better as a means to show him the power of like addressing personal problems... I showed my response to none of con Caltrek and others and they all agreed it was oh you wrote it oh you wrote him a letter oh we're having an intervention oh interesting I don't think this is gonna work <laughs> we're having a written intervention that's what we're doing we're gonna write him a letter getting it all out on the table expressing it you know we're gonna we're gonna do this because they I kind of have a lot of respect for you guys you're trying to resolve this. I would have been long gone ages ago. I would have. It's a video game. I'm not dealing with it. I have no issue just moving on, right? But, I mean, you guys are putting in some good effort here. After, what, this has got to be like two, two, three years you've been with this guy? Yeah, you started in Nathria, right? So this is like two years deep. Everybody who read it agreed it was extremely well written. And that maybe there was a chance of getting through to him. I hoped it was real, and we'd see some improvement. He read it. He said that though what I said and others' responses hurt him, he understood that the way he'd been behaving had been a problem. But there was something in the tone of voice. There was something in that tone of voice that just told me he wasn't buying it and he wasn't going to do anything in reality the only effect it had was it gave us a period of time where things didn't get worse but it didn't take long until we were back at monthly meltdowns now and then weekly we had stopped keeping a permanent record of him <laughs> that's jesus christ the bureau he's thrown the bureaucracy out of whack nightmare the bureaucracy's ruined oh no no way. None of Connor Caltrek weren't afraid to shoot back at him when he'd melt down, but it didn't stop him doing it. Until one day, we found that Zorath had muted half of the guild on Discord and removed many of us from Battle.net. Of course, he still showed up to the raids, but since he had us muted, he would constantly now talk over everybody without realizing it. <sighs> oh my god. It just gets worse. At which point, Blind Hopes and myself decided this, this can't go on. So we muted him back. <laughs> That's not the solution. 
that's not the solution. That's so far from the solution. <sighs> Maybe that would be enough. But he found out. And a few days later, he unmuted everyone and just acted like nothing had happened. Nothing had happened. I, though, was not fucking having it. I am so done. I told Yerba, Yerba, I'm not unmuting him. I can't deal with it. No way. Yerba understood and didn't argue with me. Blind Hopes also wouldn't unmute him. So for the coming raid nights or any time that he was on Discord, we would now talk over him without realizing it. <sighs> Which, big surprise, upset him. I, <laughs> I've only ever had to say these words once and it was during the burning crusade maybe even Nups was there that you cannot have anybody in the guild muted it's impossible and if that's the situation one of you has to go like that, I've only had to say those words once they unmuted they'd had some fight about some fucking thing I don't know didn't care I was like, you can't have somebody muted. It's not happening. Either one of you leaves, uh, you unmute. That's it. That's the situation. That's just the way it's going to be. And thankfully, I haven't bumped into this since the Burning Crusade. <clears throat> he was raging. Apparently, he was telling everyone about how bad Blind Hopes and myself were for now bullying him and pushing him out of the guild. This is what brings us to the final incident in our journey here. Honestly, the details aren't important of this meltdown. He got into it with a friend of Blind Hopes, a mine who we brought into Discord to help us with some savage raiding we had been dipping into in between WoW patches. Our friend said something slightly antagonistic to Zorath because he didn't know him and didn't give a fuck about his attitude. Yes! <laughs> you brought in a fucking rando? This guy started shooting his mouth and the rando's like, who the fuck is this guy? What the fuck is going on here, dude? <laughs> Why don't you shut the fuck up? We're doing savage raiding. Oh, that is beautiful. You bring in some outside guy. Doesn't know the history, this long torment. Here's something bullshit and just calls it out like, shut the fuck up, whoever that is. Zoath raged, raged in a worse degree than I had ever seen in my life. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. He was absolutely mortified that somebody he didn't know would tell him to shut his mouth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But it was the straw that broke Yerba's back. I didn't find this out until quite a while later from none of con. But after this fiasco, Yerba could no longer ignore the fact that at the center of every single drama was Zorath. He might have been good friends with him. They'd been friends for years, but there was no way of pretending anymore that it wasn't just him. Because of their history, he didn't want to be the one to kick Zorath to the curb and leave him out to dry. So he gave it, the gave the, he, oh, he delegated it to Yerba. With great delight and pleasure, Yerba sent him a message that he needed to find a new guild to trial with. Come Dragonflight, he would no longer be a member of Boatless. And so he left. He did. He left. He began trialing with another guild on another server. The only thing we did with him at all was our weekly Sylvanas mount farm for people who were there for our cutting edge kill. Otherwise, we never saw him. Except for a couple of conversations into Discord. One night, another guild he had a bit of a blow up and everyone started getting pissed. This included Zorath. Eventually, that guild he asked Zorath why he was piggybacking on the back of this. Uh, as he was doing. Zorath a favor by becoming the most disliked guildy in his place. Zorath said, If you think I give a fuck about this guild, you're mad. I'm awaiting approval from the guild I've been trialing with for the last two weeks to transfer, laughing my fucking ass off at you plebs. And that is when I knew there truly was a light to the end of our drama. A few days later, I woke up and there it was. A two-page-long Discord goodbye message. 
At first, I was surprised at how civil it seemed. Until I read it twice. And the sheer amount of backhanded compliments was unreal. I won't go on too much about it. But for example, as I copy this out of the document. He said to one of the healers in our mythic team. You aren't a bad player for a girl. And to our altaholic, he said that if he decided to pick two classes to master, he could probably get a Mythic Plus title. But oh well, it was over, guys. It was done. He was gone. Except not really, because despite the two-page-long message, he never left our Discord. And besides the characters he transferred off the server... All of his goddamn alts were still in our guild. Yerba told me that they had agreed that he could leave his alts in the guild? Uh, uh, why? Why? You've got to cut it. You've got to cut the umbilical, man. You've got to cut it. Yerba said he didn't want to completely abandon the long friendship. And he liked doing keys with Zorath. Or maybe joining an alt raid. And why would he have a meltdown about alt raiding? But he told Zorath people would need time. And it would probably be best if he just went away for a while. Oh my god, you've given the impression he can come back. Oh my god, he thinks it's like a hiatus. Ah. Uh, oh my god, he thinks it's a temporary break. Oh my god. <sighs> we had a guild meeting with the rest of us and just decided to ignore him. We weren't going to have to deal with him in our main raid, thank God. And once Dragonflight came around, we figured he'd just be busy in his new guild, so he wouldn't be around us much. All we had to do as a collective raid was make it until Dragonflight. Of course, that failed. Because Zorath was fucking Zorath. Eventually, he got into it again. This time with our raid leader, Nonofcon. If I'm being honest, this last incident wasn't even that bad. Nonofcon was complaining in his usual baity trolley manner about the TCG mount becoming a Twitch drop because of rarity being lost. For the record, he didn't even have it. It was the principle of it for him. <laughs> well, you think thousands of dollars for a WoW mount is, like, on principle? <laughs> thousands of dollars for a WoW mount is... Uh, it's the principle of the matter. <laughs> it's the principle of the matter. No. <coughs> and Zorath uh, decided to spam him with a salt gif. <laughs> Nonacon decided that was it and fucking kicked him out of our Discord. Zorath, of course, bitched to Yerba about it. But Yerba, as tired of it as the rest of us, even though he's his good friend, said that if it wasn't this slightly petty reason to kick him, it just would have been something else, mate. Something else would have set you off. There would have been another meltdown. Without access to our Discord, Zorath decided to take it to Twitter. <laughs> he began tweeting at our guild and its members about it, throwing shade at none of Con about it, even making one of his pinned tweets mentioning this. He even messaged other guildies who weren't even a part of any of his meltdowns and made shit up about past incidents. But we had the permanent record to clear our names. Praise be, we saved the messages. Oh, yes! In comes the permanent record. Actually. Actually. Boom! Boom, bitch! Save the emails, baby! There it is! Oh, yeah. We even started getting messages and reports from members of the high-end Mythic Plus community. Brackets, not Gingy. 
about all the bridge burning, about all the bridges he's begun to burn there. It's honestly pretty cathartic not knowing that it wasn't us. It was such a relief to find out it wasn't us and that he was doing this elsewhere and other people had the same issues. And ladies and gentlemen, that is where we are now. I'm much happier for not having the constant negative force in our lives and tiptoeing around him on the daily. It will take some time for us to purge ourselves of what we've been through. And that's largely why I'm writing this tale to you, Mike. This is catharsis for all of the shit we've been through. I thank you so much for listening, and I hope it wasn't too long. Bro, if anything, I wanted more details. Like, genuinely, I actually wanted more details. That is a story to begin our new year of drama time. God damn it. But if any of you listening right now are guild leaders, raid leaders, whatever, do not get one guide. For the love of God, don't get one guide. If the signs are there, you've tried and you've failed, just say goodbye. Have a happier life. Have a happier life. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of drama time, our first episode of the new year. I hope you enjoyed it. I do not have that level of tolerance whatsoever. I've got a lot of work to do over the weekend to get some videos done for you guys. I'm looking forward to it and it's kind of not looking forward to it a little bit. Yeah, it's not easy working from here, especially now I have a studio's full worth of gear inside here as well that I didn't used to have. But it's got to be a good night. We'll be back next week. We have Final Fantasy XIV's new patch coming out, some Guild Wars 2, and of course, some big Dragonflight raiding for our community. We have it all going on for MMO January, and I look forward to sharing it with you all. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to go and have some dinner with my family. Love you all. Goodbye.